I have a review for you today. The Garmin Vivo Active 4 S Sports Watch, which is the cheapest multi-sport watch from Garmin. They currently sell for around 210 euros, which is a good price considering how many features they have. I've had mine for two years and four months, which is evident in the condition of the strap, but I'm very satisfied with them. These are actually my second Vivo Active. I previously had the Vivo Active 3, which I replaced with the newer, smaller model after two years. In the fourth generation, Garmin introduced two variants, the Vivo Active 4 and 4S. I immediately chose the 4S because it's smaller and more comfortable to wear. This time, I even opted for the black color, which I was previously concerned about because I thought the black color on the stainless steel bezel might scratch over time. However, as you can see, even after such a long time of daily wear, the watch still looks like new, except for the torn cover film, which I will address next time. The watch size and weight are unbeatable. They are barely noticeable on the wrist even during sports activities, which is an important feature for regular athletes. The material and body are durable. I have hit them against various objects several times, and once I hit them so hard against the kitchen's counter that a piece of wood broke off, and the impact was directly on the display. However, even though I only have a film on it, the watch endured without any damage. The watch body is made of thaw plastic and the crown is made of stainless steel. The watch has a very comfortable 18mm silicone strap, while the larger Vivo Active 4 has a 20mm strap. The strap can be easily replaced via a quick release system. The strap is fastened like a regular watch, where the pins have springs that pop out under pressure to prevent damage to the body. That has never happened to me, so you don't have to worry about losing your watch. However, this only applies to original straps. If you order Chinese straps, I recommend it replacing all the metal fasteners with original ones when changing the strap. It's not as difficult as it might seem, and it will prevent you from losing your watch when unfastening a poor quality binding. This fourth generation has a couple of very good improvements compared to the third such as two side buttons instead of the like on the Vivo Active 3. Controlling the watch during sports is much easier with the top button used to start an activity and the bottom button used to switch between exercises or between rounds or circuits. The, the other Vivo Active 3 had a flat side swipe on the opposite side of the button, which allowed you to scroll up and down in the menu. But this is no longer present in the 4th series, which doesn't bother me at all because it wasn't very handy and I didn't use it. The extra button is much better. Apart from those two buttons, this 4th series is traditionally equipped with a touch screen display, which in my opinion isn't very suitable for sports watches because button control is much more accurate and comfortable, as seen in the higher series such as the Instinct, Fanis or Forerunner for the some 900s series. The new Fanix and Forerunner 955 models offer the choice between controlling only with the five buttons or in addition, connecting touch control to the buttons, but that's in a price range three times higher and not worth going into detail here. The touch control on this Vivo Active 4S works excellently due to the technology, but given the purpose of the watch, which is sport, the touch display is rather a weakness, as the watch can act erratically under water or a jacket sleeve. Several times during my runs or bike rides, the activity would end on its own while I was taking a break and preparing for the next stage. As the jacket sleeve shifted over the touch display, it's important to note that once an activity is finished and saved, it's not possible to return to it.
So I have to start a new activity and then I have, for example, one run divided into two. To explain precisely, the activity can only be started and paused with a button. So during the activity, it can't be interrupted by the sleeve of a jacket. But if you pause the activity and at the moment when you are taking a break, the activity's termination is done on the touch display. And at that moment, your sleeve could accidentally end the activity and then you will have it divided into two parts. In the worst case, the sleeve could even delete it, but this must be confirmed twice on the display. And it has not happened to me yet. To solve this problem, there is an option to enable automatic display locking, but then you must hold the button for 3 seconds to unlock the watch for control. With this lock, it's not possible to end the activity with a button pressed through the sleeve while running, for example. To lock display, I have to wait for 10 seconds of inactivity, and only then I can pull the sleeve over the watch to ensure that the activity doesn't end accidentally during the break. This problem is eliminated in the summer when I don't wear a sleeve. As I mentioned, the problem is that similar watch variants that only have button controls with five buttons or now the new combination with the touch control are the top variants and cost almost three times as much or more, although they also offer more advanced functions, but not everyone will use them. When I mentioned taking a break during an activity, I must also say that VivoActive 4S unfortunately doesn't have the option to resume the activity later. Only higher models starting with the Instinct have this option. That means that when I go cycling, for example, and want to have lunch somewhere, I can only pause the activity, but GPS remains on during this pause, which sub substantially discharge the battery. With higher watch models, you can simply click on the option to resume later, and everything will be turned off so you can come back to it later and continue in the same activity. All the watch notifications are only vibrations that I can adjust the strength of, but this model doesn't have the beep sound like higher models. It's waterproof up to 5 ATM, so I can wear it while swimming in a pool. And there is also a swimming activity tracker that counts how many pools I swam, laps and other metrics. Unfortunately, under swimming in open water is not supported. It's only available on the Hydris Phoenix and Forerunner models that use GPS to track distance in open water like a lake. One good thing is that the VivoActive 4 and 4S can measure heart rate, even during swimming in a pool. I have taken these watches to the sea about 5 times over the years. I always bath in salt water with them and they work, it don't mind at all. Now let's take a look at the watch menu. If I swipe up or down with my finger, I can access to the so-called watch widgets, which are different fields of data that I set that I want to have here, and they show me the various functions of the watch. I can set here only those that interest me. I have daily overview, health statistics, activity history from the last week, body battery, pulse oximeter measurement, notifications, weather, heart rate, steps, minutes spent on sport activities this week, floors, climbed and thermometer. I could also set up additional widgets, such as calories burned, music control, hydration tracking and more. To measure heart rate, there is an elevate third generation sensor equipped with a pulse oximeter that measures blood oxygenation. This is not only for climbers at high altitudes, but the watch can elevate how well your body absorbs oxygen during the day and night, and how well rested and charged your body is. Although the heart rate sensor has its limitations, I have not experienced any measurement errors so far, and it only has a slower response time compared to a chest strap. I'm not a competitive athlete, and my most frequent activities are running, cycling, cardio and fitness, and I have not felt the need to buy a chest strap for any of these activities. The measurement is accurate enough for me, just be careful and don't place the watch with the sensor directly on the table when you're removing it. It could scratch the sensor's plastic cover, which could affect the accuracy. 
This third generation sensor still has a plastic covering, which is easier to scratch than the newer Fenix 7 and Forerunner 955 models that have an improved and more accurate Elevate fourth generation sensor with a temperate glass cover. Most likely, we will see this new sensor in the upcoming Vivo Active 5 series, which is coming soon, but we can expect a starting price around 380 euros, which the new model will maintain for some time. Now, I will describe the individual widgets that I have placed in the menu. First is my day, where I have steps, calories, climbed floors and other metrics that I have achieved since morning. There is also health statistics, which includes current heart rate, stress level, body battery and breathes per minute. Body battery is expressed in percentages. Based on sleep and exertion, it calculates the value of the organism's discharge for the current day. Here is the activity history, which provides a preview of recent activities that I can click on and view my results. Again, there is body battery with a graph. Next is pulse oximetry measurement, which takes a while and requires the person to be calm. We won't wait for it now. Phone notifications, which are notifications that I can respond to directly from the watch using predefined replies. I can set my own responses in any amount, such as I can talk now or OK, and quickly reply using do's. The weather widget now includes wind direction and speed, which was missing in the previous series. Weather will be displayed only through a connected mobile device with internet access and location turned on, and it will show me the weather in the place where I am located. It also includes an hourly and daily forecast. Next, I have heart rate with a graph and I can also click on a summary, but it's better to view all these summaries on my mobile in the Garmin Connect app. As another widget, I have the number of steps taken per day and below that is my daily goal, which I can set either automatically or manually. When set to automatic, it calculates the average according to the last period and determines the goal accordingly. Minutes of intense activity I did per week and below, again, my weekly goal. Climbed floors. I also have a thermometer widget, which is not present by the manufacturer, but I installed it from the Connect IQ app, which is similar to the Google Play Store from which I downloaded it. The watch has a thermometer sensor, but when I wear it on my wrist, it will naturally measure and approximate body temperature. So I need to either take it off my wrist and let it cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes or use this function in water, where it measures better up in contact with water. I don't know why the watch doesn't have the temperature widget in uh, the factory settings, because the higher series have it. This installed one is not as good as the one of uh, the Phoenix, for example. I can of course change the watch face designs. The watch has around 8 preset options and I can download it hundreds more from the Connect IQ app. I don't like the basic ones much because they don't display many metrics and miss numerical data, which is mostly replaced with an indication of how much is left for my daily goal. For this reason, I downloaded a watch face from the Phoenix 6, which uh, caught my eye. I can customize all displayed data, change the color, add a second hand and change other parameters. On my watch face, from top to bottom, you can see the battery percentage, day and date, floors climbed, sunrise or sunset, altitude and steps per day. In addition to the watch face and information displayed on it, it can also set up data screens for activities, which are additional pieces of information that are displayed during the activity. I just need to press the top button where my chosen activities are displayed. I can select one, press the top button to start it. And now you can see four data screens, timer, distance, pace and heart rate. I can swipe down for more data screens and swipe down again to see my heart rate zones. 
and I can keep an eye on staying in the optimal heart rate zone. And just by holding down the button button, button and going into settings, I can choose what each screen should display. We end the activity, confirm or delete it and return to the watch menu. As you may have noticed while browsing the accessories in the basic menu, I missed the altimeter and barometer screen, which are only available in higher watch series. The Vivo Active 4 and 4S have a barometric altimeter, but it's not full-fledged and is limited compared to higher models. It only measures approximately. It's not able to discern a difference of 1 meter as is the case, for example, with the Phoenix and the measurement is not displayed continuously. The watch recognizes a difference of one floor and correctly calculates the floor I ascended, but usually the altimeter doesn't show such a small difference in high accurately, and if it does, it takes a long time to react to the change. I think this is intentionally done by the software, so these watches don't have equipment comparable to three times more expensive models. It's not possible to manually calibrate this altimeter, as in higher models, but it automatically calibrates according to the GPS during activity. If I don't use GPS activities daily, the altimeter without calibration will be very inaccurate. Overall, these watches are adjustable enough, and after setting them up, they display almost anything I want. There are some limitations compared to higher models, which allow for even more advanced settings. Now let's quickly look at the settings. There are options for watch face, clock functions, activity history, records and totals. Here's another setting where I can adjust activities. I only have the ones I set up here. There's also the widget settings. Controls menu items that appear after a long press of the top button. I'll show you. I have to go out and hold the top button, and right here is the controls menu. Turning off the watch, Garmin Pay, Music, Find Phone, Current Location Coordinates, Don't Disturb Mode, Cellular Icon, Timer, Brightness Level, and Screen Lock. Now back to the settings where we left off. Shortcut, which is the function that appears when I swipe from left to right on the display. Then watch face appearance, heart rate sensor settings, additional sensor options, music playback options, phone connection settings and more. I can also turn <coughs> the movement prompt. If I sit for more than an hour, the watch will warn me that I have little movement and alert me to take a walk. It's also possible to turn on the automatic start of the activity. If I forget to start an activity, the watch recognizes after a while of running that I run and it will automatically start the run activity. Furthermore, the system where I have the settings for the automatic display log that I have already talked about, language, time, data, brightness level, physio true up, which is a function for data sharing, force of vibration, don't disturb mode, units and others. Now let's take a look at sport activities. I have run here, where compared to higher models, mainly more advanced functions are missing, such as recovery time after training, aerobic and anaerobic training effect, training status, training load and so on. In the settings, I can set a preview of the hard zones. The main disadvantage, as I already said, is that there is no option to restore later. In terms of GPS strength, I would say it's excellent. So far, I haven't registered any problems even in heavily forested terrain. The battery life of the watch is proportional to its size. It could be said that the watch fulfills the manufacturer's data. From my personal experience, having the GPS activity turned on takes about 12% of the battery per hour. I go running about twice a week for 30 minutes and do cardio or fitness training twice a week. And even then, the watch had no problem lasting 6 days with all notifications, but I only have the brightness uh, set to 20% and the shortest interval for the backlight. I have the second hand turned off on the dial. All these saves the battery. 
Now, after two years and four months of daily use, the watch lasts for four to five days, which is not bad at all. I also have to say that the smaller 4S model has a smaller battery than the fourth model, so it lasts about one day less. In my opinion, the fourth S model has uh, also a weaker processor because this watch is slower compared to the older VivoActive 3 model. I can show you this when switching between data screens in the basic menu. You can see the delay when switching from one to the other, which never happens to me with older and bigger model. If someone were to do an all-day activity with GPS, they would have to take a small power bank with them and charge it during breaks, because the watch doesn't last more than 10 to 12 hours with GPS turned on. If you also have music turned on as well, you will be about half of time, about 5 hours. The battery charges quickly, from zero to full in an hour. The charging connector is located on the bottom and is the same for all models. So it's practically impossible to charge the watch on the hand, but even if it were possible, it wouldn't be very comfortable and easy with the connected cable during activity. Regarding the accuracy of the measurement, I will mention for example the pedometer, which works on the same principle as uh, all the others. Without GPS on, the pedometer only measures approximately based on the swing of the hand and tremors. So if I perform some manual activity, it will count a few extra steps because it thinks I'm walking, which happens when I'm washing dishes or driving a car. If, uh, on the other hand, I carry something in my hand or push something like a stroller or rickshaw while walking, there is an opposite problem. My watch will measure fewer steps. In that case, I just need to turn on the walking activity and my steps will be measured according to GPS. On ascended floors, when walking upstairs, it's necessary to have a free hand on which I have my watch. It must not be in a pocket uh, and climb one of stairs. If I hold something in my hand or skip steps, the measurement will not be accurate. Heart rate measurement is excellent but it depends on individual conditions. Due to the nature of the measurement technology, in some cases, the shade or structure and hairiness of the skin can cause problems. Then it's necessary to purchase a chest strap. I did not have this problem. It is uh, rather exceptional. The Connect app for mobile phones is excellent. The best I have seen so far. It's clear, has many motivational tools and you receive various badges for your performance, which then put you into higher performance levels. You can also search for friends with Garmin devices here and give each other various challenges, such as step challenges, running, cycling and more. You can monitor what activities your friends have done and compare results, share data, and everything is very easy here and there are plenty of customization options. As for the main disadvantages, I will definitely mention the touch display, which is of very high quality and responds well, but it's not very suitable for sports. Another disadvantage is that activities don't have a function to resume later. The barometric altimeter is not as sensitive as in the higher models, and the battery is not built for all-day activities, but I have to consider that in relation to the price and size of the watch. All these disadvantages can be eliminated if I pay extra and buy a higher model. The Instinct is the best in terms of price and battery life, but is uh, rather unattractive in design. Uh, then there is the Forerunner 745, which has a similar battery life. If I want a strong battery and pleasant look, I have to go for the Top End Phoenix or Forerunner 950. 45 and 955. The big advantage of the Vivactive 4 and 4S is the price of around 210 euros. The size and weight, I don't even know, I have them on my wrist. I used to wear the Phoenix, which didn't seem very big to me at the time, but compared to this watch, it was very heavy and uncomfortable for running. I recommend uh, the Vivactive 4 and 4S, despite the unsuitable touchscreen display. 
for the price of 210 to 250 euros you won't find a better multi-sport watches on the market if you don't mind the outdoor look try the instincts which are only about 40 to 80 euros more expensive depending on the features they have button controls several fold better battery life and better sports functions but they are much more massive Regarding displays, all watches had monochromatic displays, but now Garmin offers almost all models in two versions, one with a monochromatic display and under a different name, watches with the same parameters but with an AMOLED display as modern phones have. This VivoActive series has a classic monochromatic display that is colorful but doesn't emit light on its own. You have to turn on the back lightning like with classic digital watches from 20 years ago. The main advantage of this monochromatic display is that it doesn't go out of light, or more precisely, the backlight goes out of light. But you can still see the time and other values on the dial non-stop in daylight, and it also consumes less battery. In contrast, watches with the same functions are now being sold under the name Venue, which have an AMOLED display like a mobile phone. So they'll still go out of light and the dial only appears when you click on it or you turn on gesture activation. So when you turn your hand towards your eyes, the display lights up and you can read the time and other things. The AMOLED display emits strong light like a phone, so it has higher power conception and the display constantly turns on and off. Personally, I would never buy a watch with an AMOLED display. I don't want to have in quotation marks a second mini mobile phone attached to my wrist that I have to constantly turn on to see the time. I want classic watch with smart functions that doesn't dazzle me in the dark and shows the time 24 hours a day, which this monochromatic display fulfills. But AMOLED displays are now such a fashion trend that many people want because of brighter colors and sharper resolution, and therefore Garmin has started producing using these watches quite recently. The Vivo Active 4S has never disappointed me at all over the years. I knew all the disadvantages from the specifications beforehand, so they met my acceptations and the quality that you have to pay extra for when buying the Garmin brand watch is noticeable every day. Almost all Garmin watches are primarily adapted for sports and not for calling, which is not possible, or browsing some internet applications. For that, you have to buy something like an Apple or Samsung. This watch is designed to meet the demands of athletes as much as possible. Next time, I'll focus on watch covers and photos, which I have extensive experience with. If you subscribe to my channel, you won't miss it. And that's all for today.